Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are so glad that you are listening. This is Mark with Word of Faith Fellowship Radio Program. And today we want to share with you about the subject of worship. And really, this is going to be a time of worship. We will have uh, singers from the Word of Faith Fellowship uh, worship team singing various songs of worship. And I'll be sharing about what God has put in my heart about worship. Worship is really uh, the main reason why you and I exist. The, the one reason that we have in life to, to exist, the purpose uh, of our being every day, is really to worship God. And if you think about it, that is so opposite of how the world lives. Uh, the world is focusing on self and, and gratification and, and things that please self. And, and then you have pride to exalt the self. But you and I were made to actually worship God, to, to think about how awesome he is, how powerful, how wonderful he is, and to think about everything that he has done for you and I. And, and really today, I want to share about having a heart of worship. When we worship God, we are absolutely fulfilled. You, you literally are fulfilling your very reason of existence. And we're going to start with a song today. And, and the song is, When I Look Into Your Holiness. And as we sing this, I hope you will join with us. And you'll hear the words in the chorus. And the words in the chorus say that we are supposed to worship Him with everything in us. And it is the one reason that we live. The reason we live is to worship Him. And, and I hope that as you sing this with us, that it will so come in your heart. Yes, God, the reason I live is to worship you. That is it. That is what I want. That is the one desire I have, God, is to just worship you. So as we sing this song, join with us when I look into your holiness. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your love,
The next song we're going to sing is In the Sanctuary of My Heart. And it starts with, I will come before you in the sanctuary of my heart, and I call you Lord. Now, this song is talking about that you and I are actually a sanctuary for God. If you think about this, in the Old Testament, when they came to worship God, God ordained for them to have a tabernacle and then later a temple. And this was the place where they came to worship God. As a matter of fact, there was a certain part of the tabernacle and temple that was called the Holy of Holies. And only the priest, the high priest, could enter in there. And in that place was the Shekinah glory of God. The, the very presence of God. And, and this, this whole place was a sanctuary for God. And so everything about the tabernacle and the temple was focusing on worship. And you had the Levites, and they were in the service of worship. And then you had the priests who would actually be the ones leading the worship. And every focus was on God worshiping him. But because Jesus came, and he actually died for you and I. When he did that, he made the way for you and I. Now all of a sudden, we are holy if we will submit to him, if we will let him live in us, we become holy and therefore we can become the sanctuary of God because it says that he sends the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. And that's the wonderful thing about being born again is the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. But then we become a sanctuary for God ourselves. And so this song is talking about in the sanctuary of my heart, I call you Lord. And the song goes on and it actually says, standing in the fire of your presence, Lord, all unclean is burned away. And that's really the cry of a true worshiper. A true worshiper wants anything that's profane, anything that's not of God, anything that's sin, to be burned away. When we're in the presence of God, not only do we feel just total fulfillment and His glory and feel peace and feel everything that God has for us, but we are also convicted of sin that is in our life. And so there should be a cry in our hearts, God, I want to worship you. And so purge me I want to go through any fire that you have to remove things in my life that are not of you because I don't want anything to hinder me from being able to give my whole heart and my whole being to you. When we go through a life of sin and we don't listen to God, we don't walk in his path, we open the door for all of these sins and they hinder us from truly worshiping God. So as we sing this song, In the Sanctuary of My Heart, join with us and let that cry be in your heart as we sing, Standing in Your Fire, God. And it goes on, By Your Blood We Are Made Holy. And make that your cry as we sing this, God, purge my heart. I'm going to stand in your fire and whatever it takes to cleanse me, let it happen so I can be a true worshiper of you. So here is In the Sanctuary of My Heart. I will come before you in the sanctuary of my heart. I will call you Lord. I will come before you in the temple of my being, offering a sacrifice of praise. I will be for you a holy place, knowing that you are in the sanctuary of my heart. Standing in the fire of your presence, Lord, all unclean within me burns away. By your blood I'm holy, by your blood I'm Temple of my being, I'm a 
Jesus is referred to in the Bible as the Lamb of God, the spotless Lamb of God. And we know in the Old Testament that to address the sin of God's people, there was a sacrifice. There had to be a shedding of blood, a payment of a price. And so there were sacrifices of lambs and different animals. And the sacrifice would cover the sin of the people so they can approach and, and worship God. But it never really cleansed and removed the sin from them. And so it was a constant repeat of having to do this sacrifice. But when Jesus came, it actually says that he was the final sacrifice for us. When he died on the cross for us, he was the complete and final sacrifice because he was the Son of God, the perfect sacrifice. And it actually says this in Philippians chapter 2. Although he was one with God in the form of God, he came in human form and he humbled himself to the extreme death uh, of the death of the cross. It says that he who knew no sin became sin so that we can become his righteousness. So he did this as the Lamb of God. And in Revelations chapter 5 verse 11, here's what it, it's a scene in heaven. And here is the scene. It says, then I looked and I heard the voices of many angels on every side of the throne and of the living creatures and the elders of the heavenly Sanhedrin. And they numbered 10,000 times 10,000s and thousands and thousands, saying in a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was sacrificed to receive all the power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and blessing. So this next song we're going to sing is called Glory to the Lamb. And it talks about how the Lamb of God is so worthy that we give him glory. So as we sing this song, have it in your heart and think about what he did for you, that he was the final sacrifice for you. Let it be personal in your heart that God Almighty the, the Son of God in heaven loved you so much that he came and he shed, came in this human form and shed his blood for you personally because he loved you so that you would not have to go to eternal punishment and be separated from him because he loved you so much. He became this sacrifice, the Lamb of God, so here is Glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory. As we worship God, many times we sing how God is exalted. In the Bible, you see the word exalted. It refers to God. He is exalted. The term exalted literally means to be lifted up. In Psalms, it says, 
Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. So when we're saying exalted, you are exalted, God, we're saying that you are lifted up high above everything else, that there is no one like you at all. You are far above. There's no one that compares with you. And as we sing that God is exalted, we're also humbling ourselves and saying, God, you are exalted above me. You're exalted above every single thing in my life. I surrender to you. I do not put anything before you, but you are in my life exalted. You are far above every single thing in my life. He is so great. He is so awesome. And using the word exalted is just simply to say, I recognize you that you are above everything else. There is no one that can come even close to comparing to you. You are high and lifted up. It says, be exalted, Psalm 21. O Lord, in your strength, we will sing and praise your power. Psalm 18, let the God of my salvation be exalted. So join with us as we sing, Exalted, you will ever be exalted. Exalted, you will ever be exalted. You are worthy of honor and praise. Adore When we worship God, God wants us to give our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole strength. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He responded and he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. You see, God wants our heart when we worship. As a matter of fact, God is looking for those people when you and I worship that it's coming from the very core of our heart. He doesn't want lip service just coming and saying words. As a matter of fact, God continually told his people, you come to me and you acknowledge me with your mouth and your lips, but your heart is far from me. You see, God wants us to give our entire heart. And when we sing to God, and when we utter the praises, and we utter worship to God, it must come from the very depth and core of our heart. That, that, that place in your heart where you were made to worship Him. And there's an overwhelmingness of how great God is. There's an overwhelming love that we have when we worship God. God, I love you so much. God, you are so amazing. You are so wonderful, God. And as we let the words come out of our mouth as we sing, it comes from that very depth of the place where you and I were, were, were called to live. So this is the requirement of God. And as we sing this next song, We've come now to worship you, Lord. The chorus of it 
talks about worshiping you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our praise. Now that involves every single part of us. When, we, when we're singing to God, where is our mind? Is our mind fully on God and how wonderful he is? Where is our heart? Where is our strength? Are we singing half-hearted or are we singing with all of our strength? This is the requirement of God. So as we sing this song now, we've come now to worship you, Lord. Join in with us and let's sing with all of our heart. We come now to worship you, Lord. Here in your presence we stand, covered by the blood of the Lamb. Here in your presence we stand, worshiping you. The next song we're going to sing is called, We Give Glory and Honor and Praise to You. And the ending of this song says this, Teach us how to live in your will every step of the way. For it's not by man's might and it's not by man's power, but it's by your spirit leading and guiding us, bringing us into your holiness to give you glory, O Lord. Now, now this ending, this is the heart of a true worshiper. It is, teach us how to live in your will so that I can give you glory. Moses prayed this prayer. He said, teach me your ways so that I may know you. That's the heart of a true worshiper. You see, when we have a cry in our heart, God, I want to... Live in your will every single day, every single moment, so that I can walk in your holiness where I'm separated from anything that's wrong, anything that is sin. But <clears throat> God, <clears throat> I am totally devoted to you. That is the heart of a worshiper. And how we make sure that our heart is not in sin and that there's no hindrances in our life, how we make sure that of that is that we walk and live with God every single moment. And when we do that, we can worship Him. And we will have that place in our heart where we can give Him our whole heart. Why? Because we were walking with Him every single day. We were having that prayer, teach me to live in your will, God, because I want to be a true worshiper. I don't want my heart being astray, but I want my heart in the center of your will. So let's sing this song together and let that be the cry in your heart. God, I want to be a true worshiper. I want to give you glory, so teach me to live in your will. We give glory and honor and praise to you. We worship you. In 
John chapter 4, verse 23, here's what Jesus says. He says, A time will come, however, indeed, it is already here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking just such people as these, as his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God requires us to worship him his way. His way is by the Spirit of God in truth. That means that the Holy Spirit living inside of us will actually lead and guide us. When we yield to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us how to worship God his way. We, we see in Scripture where people have tried to worship God their own way. And God has rejected it. And even the judgment of God came on these people. Cain tried to offer a sacrifice to God. And it says that he offered it from the fruits of the field. And God rejected that. But he accepted Abel's sacrifice. Why did God reject it? Because God had ordained a certain way to bring sacrifice to him. And Cain was going against that way. And God rejected it. We also see in the Old Testament, two of Aaron's sons tried to worship God their way, Nadab and Abihu. And it says that they offered strange fire, it was called. Strange is unacceptable. The word is foreign. It is profane. And God did not accept it because God had specific ways to worship him. And not only did God reject their offering, but God's judgment came on them and it was very serious. And fire actually consumed them. It is so important that you and I come to God and worship Him the way God requires. God is a holy God. And what that means is we don't take the world's ways. We don't take the world's music. We don't take the world's looks and try to bring it into the church and come to God. But we have a cry in our heart. God, we want to come to you your way in spirit and and truth. God, lead us. Let the Holy Spirit lead us to know how to worship you. Let the sounds that come out of us be pure, not of the world, but be pure and holy to God. So I'm so glad that you joined us today on this program of a time of worship. We will be on these programs every Sunday at 1030, and I hope that you will continue listening. All of our programs are actually videoed. You can watch them. They're on our website. Go to wordoffaithfellowship.org. And we hope that you will continue to join us as we share about God. Thank you.